Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 34 of Book 7. Now, before we start, I want to define what the lowest common multiple is. So if we have two numbers, a and b, and we have a set of all numbers such that the number is equal to some multiple of a and some multiple of b, the lowest common multi multiple is part of the set, but c is less than all x for all x's within the set. So that is the lowest common multiple. So let's get on to our proof. Given two, a, given two numbers, a and b, we want to find the lowest common multiple. So that is the goal of this proposition. So let's break this into two methods. One, method one is when a and b are coprime. So we'll deal with it when it's not coprime in the next method. So a and b are coprime. So we take the number c such that c is equal to a times b and it's also equal to b times a. And thus, b measures c, and a measures c. So this proposition states that the lowest common multiple of a and b, when a and b are coprime, is equal to c. So now we have to prove it. So here is our statement that we need to prove. So let's assume that the lowest common multiple of a and b is not equal to c. So let it be equal to d, where a measures d, and b measures d, and d is less than c. Then as many times as a measures d, let there be a number e, composed of so many units, in other words, e is equal to m, and likewise, let f equal to the number of times that b measures d. So now we have that d is equal to e times a, and it's also equal to f times b. Therefore, if these two multiplications are equal, then a is to b as f is to e. And that's from Proposition 19 of this book. Now, since a and b are relatively prime, they are the smallest numbers that can express the ratio of a and b. And that comes from Proposition 21 of Book 7. Let me restate that. Since a and b are relatively prime, they are also the least numbers that can express the ratio of a to b. Now, since a to b is equal to a f e, we know that a is less than f and b is less than e again because of this relation here. Here and a or b are the smallest because they are coprime. Now if a and b is, if the ratio a to b is equal to f to e, and a is less than f and b is less than e, then according to proposition 20, then b must measure e. So b must measure e and a must measure f. So here, let's write b measuring e. Now, since b times a is equal to c, and e times a is equal to d, then the ratio of c to d will be equal to the ratio of b to e. So we have this c to d is equal to b to e. That's Proposition 17 of this book. Now, since d is less than c, so d is less than c, this ratio is equal. So if d is less than c, e is less than b. We have e is less than b, but we have b measures e. And that does not make sense because remember, this is a whole number, it's not a fraction. So b cannot simultaneously measure e and also be greater than e. So here is our contradiction. And our contradiction occurred because we made this assumption that there was a number d 
that was measured by A and B and was less than C. So this cannot be true. So therefore, the lowest common multiple is C. Now we're going to look at method two when A and B are not co-prime. So first, using method 33 of this book, we're going to find the number f and e, such an f and e is the smallest numbers that can express the ratio of a to b. So if f and e, if the ratio of f to e is equal to the ratio of a to b, then e times a will be equal to f times b. And that's proposition 19 of this book. So if e times a equals f times b, let that number be equal to c. Now, a, since e times a is equal to c, that means that a measures c, and likewise b measures c. So a and b measure c. And this proposition states that the lowest common multiple of a and b is equal to to C. Now we're going to prove that C is the lowest common multiple by contradiction. So let us assume that there is a number D, again measured by A, also measured by B, where D is less than C. As many units as A measures D, let that be the number G. In other words, G is equal to M and H is equal to N. Thus, D is equal to G times A, and it's equal to H times B. Which means that the ratio of A to B will be equal to the ratio of H to G. So, ratio A to B equals H to G. Again, that's Proposition 19 of this book. Now, we've already stated that the ratio of F to E is equal to the ratio of A to B. So therefore, the ratio of F to E is also equal to H to G. But F and E are the smallest numbers in the ratio of A to B. So therefore, F to E is the smallest. Therefore, E must measure G. So F must measure H and E must measure G. Now, since A times E is equal to C, and A times D is equal to G, the ratio of C to D will be equal to the ratio of E to G. Proposition 17 of this book. Now, we've stated that D was less than C. So if D is less than C, then G must be less than E. Now, if, e, if G is less than E, G cannot be measured by E. So here again is our contradiction. E cannot simultaneously be greater than G and also measure G. These were the initial conditions that led to the contradiction. So these initial conditions cannot be true. So there is no number D that is measured by A and B that is less than C. So in other words, C is the lowest common multiple. And that's it for this proposition.